so it's not that bad. And we have Dakota Finley showing up. Welcome, welcome. So that means we are missing only three people now. And now the class is already live, so we gotta be serious now. We just we only say serious things now. Ryan Crosby is coming in. Welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome. So we are just missing now two people. Um, like I was saying, we are going to be talking today about first order linear differential equations. And um, we gotta go, just go to it now. Start seeing the nice things. Now we we'll, we're going to have formulas. It's not going to be like the first few minutes of the class. Okay, Preston is in. Oh, that's wonderful. We are missing just one person before we start. Uh oh, yeah, and that was Preston taking the center stage in a class. So now I'm taking it back from you, sir. I'm pinning my video so nobody will be in the front again. So now this is where we are and we are going to be talking about differential equations. So that's lecture four. And we have first order linear ordinary differential equations. That's our topic of the day. As of now, we have almost everybody in the class. And like I said before, if somehow the music in the background is bothering you, please let me know. Just shoot a message in there and I'll stop it right away. I just thought that maybe it would be good to have something in the background that should be feeling boring just seeing the things that are written on my paper here. So when I ask you to solve some problems, I kind of just let you be that with that music and then I'll be looking at your nice faces as usual. And then I'll ask somebody to present the answers and we'll do that together. So what do we call first order linear ODE? So this is an equation that can be written in the form dy over dx plus p of x y equals f of x. This is what you call a first order linear differential equation. Why is it linear? You don't have a product of the derivative and the function itself. You don't have any power of the function. So you have dy over dx by itself. You have y by itself, and then you have a function of x, and then you have a function of x as right-hand side. This is what a first order linear differential equation looks like. Sometimes we have a function right in the right here, but when you have that function there, you need to divide the whole equation by that function to make sure you have this form, which we call the standard form. So that's the first order. Linear ODE. And so, how do we solve such an equation? And you know, most of the time what we do here is that I give you the steps for solving the problem and then I present one solution and then I ask you to come, come uh, to do an example with me and then another example and so on. So now I'm gonna give you the steps. How do we solve a problem if we have it and we see that it's a first order linear ordinary differential equation. Like I said earlier, you might have something in front there. So if you have it, you need to divide it. We call this the standard form. So that's the standard form of the equation. If the equation is not in a standard form, then you need to bring it to the standard form. Let's call that step zero. Transform 
the equation to obtain its standard form. All right. And this is technically saying divide by the coefficient of dy over dx. So if there is something in front of dy over dx, you divide by that thing. And then in step two, in, in step one, after that initial zero step, you will start looking for what we call the integrating factor. So what is the integrating factor and why do we need it? It's because when we have an equation like this, what we tend to want to see is that this left-hand side is the derivative of one function. So we want that left-hand side to be the derivative of one function. And so we need to find a function mu of x such that when we multiply this function, this equation by the function, that left-hand side becomes the derivative of a function. So here, what we do is we multiply the whole equation by mu of x. And so after multiplying the equation by mu of x, what we expect to see, what we expect to see is that this is the derivative with respect to x of something. That's what you want. That's the reason why you are multiplying by d mu, by mu of x, because you want that left-hand side to turn into the derivative of a function that we want to figure out. And now based on what we have here, if this was to be the derivative of a function, now look carefully and follow with me here, because this is the point that if you get, this topic is just going to be a game for you. But if you miss this point, the rest is just going to be like Chinese for me. So be very careful. Right here, we want to turn this left-hand side into the derivative of one function. Seeing the way it's written here, it looks like the product rule, which is the derivative of the product of a function. And that's what you want to see. So you want to see this as the product rule. And if that was to be the product rule, you need to have two functions there. You need to have that the derivative of the product of two functions, let's say h1, h2, if I want to take the derivative, the product rule says that's gonna be h1 times the derivative of h2 plus h one prime times h2. This is what you call product rule in calculus. That's the product rule. So I want to look at this and see the product rule. So I want to see two functions that go inside here and this thing here is the first function times the derivative of the, the second plus the derivative of the first function times the second function. And if I want to identify it like that, then I will look at this first piece. That first piece will tell me that the first function is mu of x and the second function is y. So here, what I do need 
is d over dx of the first function mu of x times the second function y. That's what I'm looking for. But if I do take this derivative, it's going to be by that formula, it's going to be mu of x dy over dx plus the derivative of mu d mu over dx times y. And, and this thing is what that left hand side is. That's what I want it to be. And so this part is exactly that. And so this piece has got to be this one. And you already have y, y. So what is left here is d mu over dx, and it's got to be this, because that's the coefficient you have in front of y. So that's why if we multiply by such a function and we want to have d over dx of mu of x times y, then d mu over dx has to be mu of x, p of x. And that's why you get that equation that you solve for the integrating factor. So find the integrating factor is solve for mu of x, this equation, d mu over dx equals mu of x, p of x. And the reason why we do that is this explanation that I just gave you here. You can, you can come back to that and, read it and, and listen and watch a few more times to really understand why you're doing this. If you get it, then it's, it's over. You got the topic, you, you solve this, you get it. And when you get that new, you know you're going to replace that here and that's what you got as left hand side. So here, the solution of this problem usually, that's mu of x is e to the integral of p of x dx. That's the answer to that part. It's always going to be that. So you're always going to have mu of x equals e to the integral of p of x. And your first step is always going to be find that mu of x. You multiply, multiply the whole equation by mu of x, that's it. And then mu of x is this, you call that the integrating factor. And so your second step will be rewrite the equation using the obtain mu of x. And when you rewrite that equation, it's always going to end up being this, d over dx mu of x that you found, you wrote it, you write it here, y equals mu of x f of x. And now your next step will be integrate both sides And when you integrate both sides, you get mu of x, y equals integral of mu of x, f of x, dx. And then the rest is just easy, divide by mu of x. And then you got your answer y. That's one over mu of x, integral of mu of x, f of x, dx. Okay. And I, I do need to have you go through those steps, which are exactly the steps that are presented in the book. But now here the difference is, if you just go to the book to read the answer, they might just write this last step because all of this is already explained in the book, right? So nobody is going in a book to restart writing all of this before getting to that answer 
which is the reason why I do recommend that you watch this video, come back and then follow the steps that are there. Because if you just want to go and then take one problem that is listed in the book, you will not go back to rewrite the, the steps that they don't write there because it's in the book and they already have it in general. Okay. So that's it. You, you get when you get here, this is already the answer because you already found mu, you already found this integral, you already found this. That's just one simple algebraic thing there. And then the last and fifth step here could be use the initial value if they are given. Use the initial values if they are given. That's it. That's all the topic is about. You got this one, two, three, four, five things. Man, you are perfect on this topic. You would never have a problem. You always score 100 when I ask you to do this. Any questions on the steps before we do an example? John? Is there any question on the steps before we head into solving concrete problems? Jimmy, are we good? Trevor? All right. I can see that Ryan is okay. Now let's do the example. As usual, I'll leave the steps right there, and then we will start solving the problem on the side. So, example one. I would say solve x squared y prime plus x y equals one. Is everybody okay? Yes. All right. I was trying to change the. It seems a bit blurry. You guys see this? I like me. Or, or maybe we apply one of our filters. You, you, you tell me which one you like the most. And then... Yeah, this one. Ah. Okay, I, I kind of love the previous one, but what do you think about this? This one's fine. Is it fine, this one? Can everybody read this? I can read that. Yeah. It brings some light into yeah. It is some boring white papers. You can turn them to gray at some point and see if it's better. Yeah, I, I think this one looks better. Everybody sees it like me? All right. Are we okay there, John? 
Okay, so yes. we solve this problem, we say, and then we say, okay, uh, this one looks like the kind of problem where we need a step zero because you got this x squared here. And then we can write uh, y prime as dy over dx, it, it doesn't matter. So we will have dy over dx answer, dy over dx plus x over x squared, that's one over x, y equals one over x. So that's step zero. We get that standard form. And believe me, if you don't do this, all the steps you will be completing will be absolutely useless. Though you will be doing that, that and finding something out of it, but it will have nothing to do with this problem. Because once you start keeping the function that is in front of y prime here, all the method is wrong. That method is correct only if you remove what is in front of y prime before you start anything. All right. So then once you are here, you do the, 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 the very first step of the solution, which is multiply the whole equation by mu of x. So get mu of x dy over dx plus mu of x, one over x, y equals mu of x over x. And I do believe that if you follow these steps one, two, three times, you don't actually need to memorize anything because they just follow as you are going. So here, that's multiply. Multiply by mu of x. And right inside there, now, solve for mu of x, the equation, you get mu of x equals e to the integral of p of x dx and p of x is right there that's p of x everything that is right here in front of y and that is in the equation that you already have in the standard form that's why if you don't divide then you get it wrong if you didn't divide you think that P of x is x, but that's not correct because you still have x squared here. So P of x is one over x. And you say that's e to the integral of dx over x. And the integral of dx over x, what is it? The natural log or the absolute value of x. Correct. So only here we will drop the absolute values. We don't need them. So this is what you have as integral e to the natural log of x. And then e to natural log of x is nothing but x, right? Uh, Can I ask a question? By the way, here is x squared, right? Yeah, I was about to ask that question. <laughs> okay, never mind. Write the whole equation by x squared, not x. Thank you, Messi. I kind of felt your question coming. Okay. Does everybody agree with this? All right. So that's x. And you also always need to care about this when you have these exponential. Make sure you simplify because if you don't, you get stuck on the next step. Can and you explain that last step one more time with the e? to the uh, integral, the first one. That's a mu of x that we just got in the derived formula here. Mu of x equal e to the integral of p of x dx, and p of x is the function that is the coefficient of y in the standard form of the equation. So we brought the equation to the standard form, and now we can read p of x from the equation. That's one over x. Are we good? Yeah, we're good now. Yeah, so that's where we get it. But first, we need to make sure we get the equation in the standard form first, because if we don't do that, we'll be using the wrong P of X. 
And that's why the, 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 the whole solution will be wrong because all your steps will be just using the wrong functions. And then here, when you do that, you get the P of X to be one over X. So you get E to the integral of DX over X. And that is natural log of X. E to the natural log of X is always X. X. Oh, Great. I thought you were asking a question, my bad. Yes, I was. Thank you. <laughs> and so we got X and the next step says, rewrite the equation. Rewrite using mu of X equals X. That's what we got. So when we rewrite this, that becomes X dy over dx plus, and then mu of X is X, X over X, though that's one plus Y equals and mu of x is x so that's x over x squared that's one over x right so this is what we get and what all we need to do now is to finish integrating the problem so how do we finish the integration process here that goes with step three, integrate both sides, right? And that, this first, when you do this, you, you write that as d over dx of x times y equals one over x. Why is that? Because in the method, we said that when we do this work, we end up with a mu of x that if we plug in here, the left-hand side, just as explained here, turns into d over dx, mu of x, y. And when you find mu of x, you just put it here. In our case, we found mu of x equal x. So that's x, y equals x, a f of x, which gives us this, okay? Is everybody happy with this? Hello. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I, I always love to have some interaction because when you don't say anything, I don't know if it's really going. I'm thinking that maybe people just think, okay, let him just, just do whatever. All right, so now we integrate both sides. Man, it, it looks like this screen is so nice now. Do you think like me? Do you see that? It's, it's almost like a blackboard. We integrate both sides now. Yeah, I, I need to take a picture of this, yeah. So we integrate both sides of the equation. When we integrate both sides, the left-hand side always turns into mu of x, y, mu of x is x and that's y. So we integrate, we just remove d over dx the, on the left and the right hand side now becomes integral of dx over x. And integral of dx over x is natural log of x plus a constant. And then usually we actually need to have the absolute values on this, right? And so, and, and the last step said, just you divide and you get y of x equals natural log of absolute value of x plus c over x. That's it. There is no fifth step because no initial value was given. Such a nice problem, you see. So one, two, three, four, five lines and you are done, 100%. And the main problem is be able to compute the integral, the right integral there, and be able to compute the right integral here. Apart from that, the rest is understanding the transition from one step to another, knowing that here you take the standard form of the equation Next thing, you multiply the whole equation by mu of x. You rewrite using mu of x that you found. 
and then you put the left hand side as the derivative of the product then you integrate then you divide full stop isn't this nice it looks like something nice to me any questions uh mr long live a question yes sir shoot so in step two there Mm -hmm. why did the the plus y just disappear it didn't disappear this here is exactly this that's the whole point of finding x the whole point of finding mu of x is to make that left hand side the derivative of mu of x times y okay and if you take the derivative here, you would see the derivative of this product is x times the derivative of y, that is this, plus derivative of x is one times y, which is this. Which goes back to the product rule that you were explaining, yes, sir? Yep, that's exactly what it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, good job, thanks. Any other question? Um, could you like talk the um, integrate both sides part out? Okay, so when we say to integrate both sides of this equation, that means literally come here, put the integral, put the integral on the left, put the integral on the right. When you put the integral on the left, always, no matter what the problem is going to be, you are going to just remove d over dx because the integral of the derivative of a function is the function itself. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. So the, the, the integral of the derivative is always going to give you the left, what was inside. So that's why here we get x, y. And the right-hand side, just put the integral, you got dx over, d, uh, over x. And the integral of dx over x is natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. That's it. And then you just divide both sides by x to get the answer. Are we good? Does that answer your question, please? Oh, it, it does. It was just, I kind of got lost because like the um, mm. the uh, integral sign wasn't on the right yeah. side. Okay, it's fine. So, and I do encourage you always ask like that because if you don't ask, I don't know where your problem is, right? And I'm paid to make sure you understand. So even if I do and say that three, four, five times, it doesn't matter. As long as it is for you to understand, it's fine. Uh, okay, any other questions on this one, on this example before I ask you to do the next one? I'll just keep these steps like this. And then I write the next problem down here and give you like five minutes to go over it. And then I, I will solve it again. So if there is no other question, let's do exercise one. And in exercise one, I'm going to ask you to solve y prime plus two x y equals x cubed. So we have such a nice problem. And then you need to recall that y prime is nothing but dy over dx. Okay, and it's exactly the same steps that you need to, to complete. And the first one, bring the equation to the standard form, multiply by mu of x, find mu of x, rewrite the equation using the mu of x you obtained, put the equation in this form, integrate both sides and divide. Let's say five minutes. And please, the first one that is ready, let me know and we use 
your answer to continue. Yeah, now we find a good a good sound to put on the background. I do like this color better than when it's just a white paper I'm writing on. And please ask if you have a question. Anyone ready? We'll do it together. It doesn't matter whether it's a mistake or not. You just need to try. Wow. This screen changed by itself to, to white, to, to blue. I didn't change it. So who wants to try with me here, please? Please. Answer.
for mu of x, I got, uh, so I set that equal to e to the integral of two of x dx. So step by step, not skipping anything. Oh, uh, so we're, we're already in standard form, I think. Okay. Yeah, we are. So we just write that down. dy over dx plus two x y equals x cubed. Check. And then? Um, so you multiply everything by mu of x mm -hmm. and then uh, you set mu of x. After you do that, you set mu of x equal to e to the integral of p of x dx, mm -hmm. which I got to be e to the x squared. And mu of x right here equals e to the integral of p of x dx. And that's e to the integral 2x dx. And that is e to the x squared. Notice that for mu of x, I don't care about the constant of integration. Even up there in that example, you didn't see me writing plus c, right? I don't do that because technically we want one function mu of x. So we don't need a constant. We just need to find one function. Okay, that's the reason why. Otherwise, we would say that this is wrong because you need a constant of integration there. But we don't put that constant because we just need one function mu. We are not just solving that in integral. We just need to find one function. Now, what's your step two, you said? What we get on that one? For that one, I got uh, right. so e to the x squared times y. Mu of x equals e to the x squared. So you get e to the... Do you want me to say like the original differential equation with mu of x or? Oh, okay. I'm just writing it down. That's what you will get. 2x e to the x squared y equals x cubed e to the x squared which is d over dx of e to the x squared y equals x cubed e to the x squared that's it right is that what you got yeah that's what i got all right, so that's the step. And then, in step three, that is integrate both sides. So uh, basically, like, if you do steps like zero through zero and one, and then you re rewrite it, mm -hmm. um, you're always going to end up with, like, D over DX and then parentheses. Yeah. Mu of x, y. Okay. That's, that's the step two. It's always ending d over dx, mu of x, y. No matter what the problem is. Which is one of the reasons why I love bullet pointing these steps because it's boiled down to you just taking those functions that you have in your specific example, plug them in and then the whole solution just roll out, you know. Any other questions? I mean, I just have one question. I got stuck on that integral on the right side. I really yeah. don't know how to do that. That's fine. We'll get to it. So no worries. Integrate both sides. And again, here, when we integrate both sides, we get integral of the derivative. So that becomes just the function that we had there e to the x squared y equals integral of x cubed e to the x squared dx. Okay? And to compute this integral, what we need to do is what we have, we call u substitution. If you don't do u substitution, 
there's no way you're going to be able to continue. And even after doing U substitution, you still need to integrate by parts. So there are actually two rules here. You have U substitution and integration by parts. So first thing here, you do U sub. So you have here U equals X squared. DU is 2X DX. So this integral becomes integral of one half U DU. U E to the U, sorry. U E to the U DU. So e to the u because e to the x squared, one half because x dx is du. So one of the x's you have here goes with dx to form du over two. That's why you get one half du. And then when you remove one x here, you're left with x squared and x squared is u. That's why you get one half u e to the u du. Is that okay? And now- Yeah, I'll follow you. Now, when you get this, you can now integrate using integration by parts. So you got e to the x squared y equals one half integral of u e to the u du. And here I say integrate by parts. So that's integral one half. And integration by parts technically let me put that up here integration by parts is like integral of u let's say integral of f prime g x prime g dx equals f g minus integral of g prime f dx that's what we call integration by parts so if you have an integral of a derivative times a function, it's equal to the product of the two function minus integral of the other derivative times the first function. And usually we do that to make the work easier. So here we are going to take e to the u as uh, f prime and u is going to be g. And we do that because after taking the derivative of u, we will get rid of u and then the integral will be easy. Otherwise, you are going to make it more complicated if you so choose the wrong parts in integration by parts. So here, I'm going to have f prime equals e to the u and g equals u. So when I will turn f f which is the function that has derivative e to the u that's e to the u which is the integral of that if you have g here you need g prime if g is u g prime is one and now you have all you need for your integration by parts it is the answer is f g f is e to the u g is u so that is u e to the u minus integral of g prime g prime is one and f is e to the u so that's one e to the u du that's how you do integration by parts and so this answer gives you one half u e to the u minus integral of e to the u is e to the u plus the constant of integration that's it All right. Any questions okay. about integration by parts? Yeah. So when you when you first wrote the integration by parts, that's the integral of f prime g dx equals f g minus the integral of g prime f dx. That first letter is a f. Yes. Okay, I got it. Good. Any other questions? Okay, so if not, then we end the integration here by replacing the u that we had. So that's one half x squared 
e to the x squared minus e to the x squared plus c. And therefore, you can head to your last step and get y of x equal. You divide the whole thing by e to the x squared. So you get one half times x squared minus one plus c e to minus x squared. And that's the final answer. When you divide the whole thing by e to the x squared, the e to the x squared cancels in this piece. And then it goes to c as minus x squared, e to the minus x squared. That's it. Nice, beautiful problem with a lot of things that are used to make sure that we can understand better in other problems. You got a question, please? I'm listening now. Okay, what was the reason why we divide by the x squared? Uh, can you say that again? I didn't get the question just. Can you what? say the last part? Here? Yeah, how do we get there? That's the last step. We are dividing here by e to the x squared to get y. Okay, I just didn't see where. Yeah, so that's, it's the next step here. You get e to the x squared y equals all the way to this. And now you solve for y by dividing by e to the x squared. And when you divide, you're dividing this side and you're dividing that side. From here, when you divide by e to the x squared, to the x squared cancel in the first two, so that's one half x squared minus one. And then c over e to the x squared is c e to the minus x squared. Is that good? Yes, sir. Okay, anything else? Hello. Are we good, Messi? Yes. I'm good. <clears throat> okay. Is, is William here, actually? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm not hearing from him. Oh, okay. All right. Good. So let me give another example. I mean, this one looks nice too, right? The good thing about this problem is the U substitution that we recall here and the integration by parts that I invite you to apply a few times if you forgot already. Now, next example. Let's do an example that comes with some strange things. This example is it's coming with some strange things, so let's do it. And then if we start solving this thing and we don't like it, we drop it, right? So now x example three and that is dt over d little t equals k times t minus 50 where k is a constant and it says t of 0 equals 200 it's actually an equation of the time, I think, uh, of the temperature and time, so that big capital T is the temperature. So, and it says K is a constant, so you don't care about it. You know it's just a number, like it could be 50, 100, 3, 2, but instead of putting that number there, they'll just put a notation K, and we need to solve this. So, 
Shall I give you like three minutes to tell me what the first step should be to bring this equation in the standard form and find the integrating factor? So here, what would be the step zero to bring this to the standard form? I expect help at this point. Uh, on the right side, you could distribute the K and then you could get DT over DT or, uh, minus KT equals Correct. negative K. Correct. That's the great thing you need to do. You bring this to the left and you, you leave the other guys here. Minus 50K. That's it. That's a step zero. Now the rest of it is exactly same as the other one. So here the function y is now t and x is now little t. That's the thing. So please let's follow the steps first and then I go on to go with you on, on the example. Usually I always think that it's better that way because before the class ends, perhaps you have an idea of what is going on when you apply in class. Was that a question? Oh, no, sorry. I forgot to mute my computer. It, oh, that's the hour strike. Anyone to try now? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so for step one, uh, I just multiplied everything by mu of t. So I got mu of t times dt over t minus mu t kt equals negative mu t times 50k. And then I set mu of t equal to 
e to the integral of negative dt. And that uh, gave me e to the negative t. e of t is e to the negative integral of k dt, which is? Oh, sorry, I forgot the k. Yeah, be careful. Because that is, this is what t, this is e of t in this case, right? Everything that is in front of the function is what d of t is. And that includes the sign and the k that is there. So that gives you e to negative k t. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. All right, thanks. Now, after that, what do you do? Uh, I rewrote the differential equation as uh, d over dt of e to the negative kt times y. dt over dt minus k e to the negative kt times t equals minus 50 k e to negative k t that's what it is multiply the whole equation by mu of t which gives you d over dt on the left e to negative k t times t as you were saying equals the right hand side negative 50 k e to negative k t and what is the next step? Uh, integrate both sides. So here we integrate both sides. And when we integrate the derivative, we get what is inside. So that's e to negative kt capital T equals integral of negative 50k. I was like 50k, 50k dollars, man. So, e to the negative kt dt. And this is an easy integral because it just gives you 50 e to the negative kt plus a constant. So remember, that k goes into the integral. And you're taking the integral of the k and the negative that goes inside. So now you have 50 e to negative kt plus c. And then in the last step, you divide to get t of t equals. And when you divide here, what you get is 50 plus c e to the kt actually. Because when you divide the whole equation by this, this thing cancels. And here, e to negative kt turns back to the numerator with a positive. So that's what your answer would be. And now, there are initial values in this problem. When you have initial values, you must use them. Well, is that somebody coming to class at the end of the class time? Well, all right, so, and the initial value said T of zero equals 200. All right. So that means plug in zero for little t and get 200 for capital T, okay? So, and that is 200 for capital T equals 50 plus C e to the zero when you plug in t equals zero. And e to the zero is one, so that's 50 plus C and so you solve for C in this problem, you get C equal 100 
and fifty, not dollars, just one hundred and fifty. When we were kids, we didn't know how to add numbers, but you know, if somebody said twenty-five francs plus twenty-five francs, that's fifty francs. But twenty plus twenty-five plus twenty, you know, you no know idea what it is. They used to say that people from my tribe learn first how to count money. So before learning how to count numbers. Could you explain how the uh, the integral of negative fifty k e to the negative k t equals fifty e to negative k t? And right here, integral of e to the a t d t is one over a e to the a t so here when you are integrating this thing e to negative k t that is e to negative k t over negative k and you have negative k here those things cancel i see it now okay thanks that's a good thing you asked so i just kind of skip it through the note just saying, okay, we take this minus k in with that, and that gives you e to negative kt. Other questions? Any other questions on this example? I actually love examples like this. That's practical problem. No more questions? Sure. Huh. All right, so if there is no more question, then I think we're going to end the class here. All right. See you guys next time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up, guys. Thank you. Yeah. We enjoyed the music for the, the last minute.